never been nervous on a hunt before, ever. But I'm nervous now. And I don't know if I'm more nervous about the actual hunting part. I'm probably more nervous about other hunters. Usually you're in this like big unit where there's a zillion acres to cover and elk or deer running everywhere, but this hunt is basically three mountains and not a ton of terrain. Yeah, I'm more nervous about other people than I am about my own abilities. people camping I'm surprised typically when I've been up here it's been people out the wazoo this is where we get to see yeah there's there's definitely hunters here elk is that that guy's got an elk uh, that guy's got coolers we might be having a sheep hunter. There might be some goat hunters here. That guy's got a target in the back of his truck. That's back in here. Oh, this is what makes me nervous. Other hunters. Goodbye to the only water you're going to see all day. I wish there was water up there, so I had to cart in 10 liters, 11 liters. I've calculated that weight out, it's like 22 pounds of water. My hips are going to feel it. My hunting partner slept in, missed his alarms. Usually I'd probably blow a gasket, but uh, maybe I'm aging properly. Did you hear me freak out? <laughs> yeah, you were, you were freaking out. You were like, oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm like, oh yeah, no, no big deal, dude. I'll it's just, just go. It's just my hunt of a lifetime. <laughs> it's only, I mean, I only get this tag once ever between now and death. So. Pretty much I'm filming for free this week. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours to this spot that should be about an hour and a half. Heavy packs suck. But I'm the one that packed it, so I have myself to blame. Didn't look heavy, spread out on my bedroom floor. What's 
interesting thing to have a once in a lifetime tag. You expect to live like a long time, everyone does. Some sometimes it's cut short. But to think I always tell people I'm gonna live till ninety. So I'm basically at my halfway point. To think I'll be 85, 90, and I'll only get to do this once in Utah. It's a cool opportunity. But the whole, yeah, the, I hope, you know, obviously I want to kill a goat. I want to be successful, but this, is, this has been a cool experience so far. Every time I come up here and I see like recreational hikers, I'm always like, that guy could be one of the tag holders. I'm just going to like run over here and <laughs> it's like this competition thing that I can't help, <laughs> but it's, it just creeps into my mind. So I just messaged Dan. It looks like uh, Dan and James, they're at work today. I'm not at work today, but they're, uh, they're going to come in a little later, so... It's just uh, me hunting with Justin uh, today, and then tonight and tomorrow we'll have Dan and James. And uh, it's pretty rad to have James along because James was with me. We hunted together a couple years ago um, with Justin, filming our elk hunt, which was the first time we'd ever done something like that. So, well, we aren't gonna kill any goats sitting here, but the rest will probably help. We're gonna drop our, uh, our camp, swing up the hammocks, just kind of stake our claim and boogie up over the top, see what we can turn up. through this cliff and up and over. The only hope is to set up and see if they if they move up. This is super rugged terrain as it most goat terrain is. So the idea of just like running in and doing a stock like in mule deer country is it's not terribly conducive for that sort of activity. This spot we're sitting in, I was here when this when there was about three feet of snow in most places and little patches of dirt. 
this area is absolutely a dust bowl. Like the goats have just annihilated. There's no vegetation they can grow. It's just awesome to see like what these goats do and how they frequent. So they're pretty habitual that I've, I've found. Hope to play the game and we'll get a shot. And if not, we'll come back tomorrow and play the game again until we connect. day two and we're just uh, James and Dan came in last night we had the LED lights on so they could figure out where the heck we were camped and I thought for sure we would uh, wake up when they came in and we had a long day yesterday so in fact that's probably the, the best I've ever slept in a hammock guaranteed but we woke up just a few minutes ago kind of prepped up there were three goats 150 yards from our camp. They moved around the back side, so we're gonna go a little better. We're gonna go up over the top. Dan's gonna go over to Santa Cruz Peak and, and uh, glass for me back. Dan and James have uh, deer tags, but they're uh, they're really here to help me, which is kind of a cool feeling. I've never really had anyone come out to help me on a hunt, which is it's humbling and it's um. It yeah, makes me want to help more people. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna give it our best today. The three 
goats we were looking for when we came over the top and like goats do, they just disappeared. We've spotted, I forgot, I forgot count. I don't know, there's like 20 or so goats down in this basin and these cliffs, but they're not, they're not in any good position to stock. There's two goats that Dan, I can't believe he didn't see him, but it just tells you like how this topography is. They bumped and they moved over to the back side of this peak that's just across the way, so we're gonna drop. We're gonna eat a little bit of food, drop about 800 feet down, and then climb this next peak, wrap around the back side, and hopefully get a stock they've bedded just shy, just this side of the ridge. So it looks pretty good. I think we've got a good opportunity. I know I've got a good opportunity to, to get on some goats. They look like Billy's from, uh, from here, Dan's over there. Yeah, doing kind of another inspection. It's hard not to want to stay here though with all these goats here just to see, but they're comfortable they're comfortable and there's plenty of time. So I'm gonna take the opportunity that we have right now, even though it means a lot of up and down and up and back up. right before we got to the saddle, the uh, the goats had moved off. I didn't know which direction they'd moved, so we got to the saddle right to my left. And we're kind of just, they just came over and we were glassing and scanning. And the two billies came up right, basically right below where we're sitting. They were at 180 yards. And uh, as we came over, I mean, I don't know, they could have heard us, but then the wind shifted. The wind was kind of coming up and it shifted this way right towards them and then I got a message from Dan saying that they had bolted so they bolted off and went over onto this face behind me um, and there's about there's about 20 goats over there I think we've figured out where the two are bedded um, the two billies there's some because they went down and joined them there's a few other groups uh, nannies and kids um, and we've identified it at least one, maybe two other billies. So, just kind of hanging tight, trying to be patient. It's super hard to hunt when it's really hot like this. The goats are bedded. A couple of them are up feeding, but we're gonna, we're gonna dip over back into the saddle, up over that peak. You have to go off the backside because it cliffs out backside there on the ground. I think we're gonna set up on that saddle and just uh, just be patient, wait it out, hoping that they'll. They'll feed up or feed over as the afternoon uh, starts on at about four o'clock is when we saw them up and feeding yesterday.
just came uh, just came over the knife ridge. It's uh, it's a little spicy, and uh, those goats are still right over here. Um, they haven't really moved. The plan is we've James. We left James on this peak over here to glass, and then Dan. We sent Dan down um, into the canyon on the opposite side. Kind of need those goats to stand up because they're about halfway down. There's no way I can make it down that shale unless uh, unless they move up a little bit. It's just too noisy. There's cliffs everywhere. So we're gonna bound. We're gonna, Justin and I are gonna bound off here and. Uh, would get set up and uh, and see if Dan can just, I'm just gonna have him leisurely hike down that sidewall. I hope this plan works. It's uh, it's awesome to have these guys here. And since this is the last day for them to hunt with us, I hope, uh, hope this plan pans out. So we gotta get rolling. You don't it? What? Got it. Let's go around. Go around. I hear him hollering. I guess I heard James holler. I 
Oh. Might have had a touch high, but it was down slope. Oh. I think it's a big nanny. You gotta be freaking kidding me. That was quick, bud. He's not rolling. James is hollering. I've never been on hunt and had people working for me. Friends that are just I think I've been in a ski community, climbing community, mountain climbing community. Hunters are the most giving people of them all. I don't care what anyone says. Hunters do things for other hunters. I hear a ton of rocks. It's an amazing community of people. I think it just went down. I can hear something. It's right there. Oh, there, it is. there it is. Oh, stop, you stop. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Tell me it's in those trees. I saw him rolling, but he's stopping those trees at the bottom. Okay. It's a long tumble. Oh crap. Was he just was he sitting there just like hot like just wobbling or what? Yeah, it didn't look like he was full yard cell type fall. Yep. I'll go back to the chute where our packs are. We'll go over to the next chute, which it looks easier to get down. We're gonna, we'll come down and meet you. That was Dan. He's over here and watched him tumble. And uh, he, thought, he said he, he said it looked like he got anchored up on some on a tree and was basically done right here, just right underneath us. And then he uh, he struggled to stand up one last time, and that uh, that's kind of goat hunting, I suppose. Wish I could just shoot him on like a football field flat and walk up to him like like a lot of elk, but I'm overcome with emotions. So freaking rad. Yo, yeah, man, dude, you are such a good friend. <laughs> oh, that was cool, man. I'm happy for you. I can't believe once him. again. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> It turned around, it looked at, looked our way, then it spun, and then I saw its tail wag. And I was like, if that's anything like a deer signal, it's ready to just kind of proceed. So where we had first set up over here, Justin and I was like ran up, and I popped up the top, and it must have heard, and it spun. It was like five yards right there, spun. And just like, uh, yeah, just like an elk or mule deer, I mean, it's, once they bust, you never, ever give up, ever. And he stopped right on that fin, quartering away, looked right back at me. I write on all my, all my veins, little sayings. This one's, you asked for it. This one's, be strong, go far. This one's something I say to all my kids, heart is good. And uh, that, that one was, that one says, uh, dues paid. Dues, ah, dues paid is for my friend Jason Cole. Something he and I have been doing for about two years. We do 100 push-ups every day and we text each other that our dues are paid. It's kind of this thing that just, just keeps us going. Reminding us to be strong, but that art was for you, Cole. <clears throat> Got a whip of them down here. This is the layer. This is where they've been hanging out. Ooh, I do not want to move. 
move it. I didn't want to be responsible for sending it correctly down. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. And it was right on the edge. It stopped and looked back like this and, and quartering away as buried it right kind of high and it came, looks like it came out yep. shoulder, but. Yeah, I saw, I saw it run across and I saw that red spot right on side. Oh, you did? Oh, it was, so it was, it was up in the, the trees straight above us. Oh, up there? Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. And then, and then it must have got up and moved and come around those trees and then it just rolled down this chute. See the very top? Yeah. That's where I had, I had those other goats at 12 yards. Oh yeah, I was watching you up. I could see you up there and I could see the goats going right by. It was crazy. Okay. I'm glad I was here. This goat doesn't die without there. you. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's an absolute, I'm serious. Super humbling. Such a rare creature. Such a beautiful animal. This hunt's only been a few couple days, but <laughs> it's that typical roller coaster of emotions. And now to see this goat right here, it's just hard to fathom that uh, this is my once in a lifetime goat. I'll never get to do this again in Utah in my entire life. Archery, mountain goat. So where were you standing? And I love it, dude. Archery mountain goat. So you were pushing down from there. Still can't believe when I drew this tag, I was just like, what? That's the good stuff right there, boys. Got the goods. I'll cook that, I'll, bar I'll smoke this, the whole thing whole on the Traeger, just like that. It'll be swing. There we go. There we go. When we came over the top, what did I tell you? I was like, I freaking love this, man. I love it. This is like... This is Kendall. So we're heading to get into the spot. And he sees like six little purple flowers. And he gets them out. And he's all taking a picture off his bow. It's my wife. I mean, that is... There, I've never seen anybody, you know, do anything like that. But that's, that's why he's successful. He just <laughs> takes the time to appreciate nature. It was so cool. That's pretty neat. Because I take pictures of flowers out in the mountains uh, when I think about my wife and I see some picture, some flowers. So I usually take a picture of the flowers and then I'll send them to her later. Ooh, it's cold. I never really imagined, like, I never thought about actually strapping a goat into my Mr. Ranch pack. That it would be my goat, not someone else's. First scouting trip of the year. I was coming up and I found a little bit of hair. I mean, there's hair everywhere, but this was the first patch I found. And I put it in there. I told myself that I was gonna leave a little on the mountain when I left. So just before I walked away from the kill site, I tore a piece of this tuft off and dropped it right there. I left it on top of the carcass. I don't know, most people might think it's silly, but it's just uh, mad respect for goats and the country they live in. And uh, yeah, kind of a cool moment. So. Surprise. I was overcome by emotion again. So Tim and I, a year ago, uh, a year and a half ago, started talking about, about goat hunting. And I told him I'm going to be 60 before I draw a goat tag because the unit I wanted to draw was so, so bad and just it takes forever. So he and I booked a two for one hunt in Alaska for this year. 
and he was like, you're going to be a first shooter in Alaska, which that's just like Tim because he's one of those remarkable humans. It's a, it's a pleasure to have him as a friend. And uh, he, uh, so I just had to send him a text and just tell him that he's up. Mr. Burnett. We're just working our way off the hill right now. Uh, the last few days has been just, it's been pretty cool. So I'm super thankful that I got to help my Kendall again. Just a genuine human being. Uh, just everything about the guy I love. He's an awesome dude. Um, I know I said that last year, but it was just a, just an awesome hunt. And I'm so glad I was able to be a part of it. I'm honored. Uh, I know you guys are going to enjoy the footage. I'm serious, you guys. I thank you so much. Like, cause this literally, this was, this is like better when shared. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. One day we're gonna go on a hunt where I get to kill something. <laughs> <laughs> JT, you are way overdue, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>